This is Vo. We talk about marketing, about brands and ads. Heck, we even make them. But what we do like the most is fun. And that's when we say, Whoa, that was good. Today, we are going to talk about how to sell your products. No, not really. Today, we have a very interesting guest with us. Welcome, Saurabh. How are you? <laughs> so, uh, he is Saurabh Goyal. He is currently the head of category and private label at 1MG. Before that, he's worked with brands like Make My Trip for over eight years, right? Yeah. For over eight years. Then uh, he's worked with other brands like Cognizant and he's been a part of everyone's favorite State Bank of India as well. Thanks. Love that. <laughs> so, uh, Saurabh, you have worked for more than I think 13, 14 years now. Oh, more than 18 years. More than 18 years. Oh, you have grown a lot in your significant field. You've uh, been part of brands like State Bank of India, which is not a private sector. Now you're a pi- uh, part of brands that are in private sector, right? How does it, how does it feel to, uh, you know, see this transition? Sure. Then I'll just take a small thing that how I've uh, you know, worked over the last 18 years. Mm-hmm. Started my career with State Bank of India mm-hmm. and I had zero idea of finance. So oh. I was an absolute misfit. I just happened to join a bank because, uh, you know, all the seniors said the finance is the place to be. Hmm. This I'm talking about 2005. Uh, joined in an excellent place. My first manager is the current chairman of bank. My second manager is current MD and the next, wow. possibly next chairman. But I clearly didn't learn anything from them. <laughs> I was not a finance guy, so I moved out of finance. Uh, in finance, I happened to travel quite a bit inside, you know, within India and outside India. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, travel is great. So I joined IT because in 2006, seven, that was the, I, you know, great IT days. Uh, it was, you were traveling for work and you were getting paid to travel. So it was mm-hmm. amazing, right? Uh, seven, eight years in consulting was a seamless transition because I started with bank and I was into consulting solutions for, uh, BFSI clients that's banking and financial banking. and, you know, uh, the insurance clients. Uh, 2013, I moved to make my trip and this is the time when the app ecosystem was not there. I still clearly remember that at that time, the big question was, should we develop, you know, our mobile website and web really, really far superior or have to invest in an app. And 2013, 14 is the time when the app ecosystem boomed. So yeah, great place at the right time. Uh, and the last 10 years has been across e-commerce in multiple roles, building new categories and, uh, luckily seeing journey of businesses growing into billion dollar plus annual revenue. Mm. Uh, so it was great. But one thing was constant over the last 18 years. Uh, at the core, I'm a problem solver mm. or a solution provider. So that's the same thing in consulting. And that's the same thing when we are working in a consumer facing business like e-commerce. We need to understand our customers. Mm. Earlier it used to be the B2B customers. Now it's B2C customers. So the more we understand our customers and we you know, uh, translate our solutions into their language. That has been cool. So the transition has been very, very smooth. Uh, nothing different, but one thing has been constant that out of 18 years, I believe more than 15 years of my work experience has been around travel, hmm. either directly or because of consulting, you know, required me to travel. So that has been combining the passion with the work. So, yeah. so uh, did you see any change when you were uh, transitioning from these sectors? Any uh, major change that you uh, thought at that time that you didn't see? So, uh, right. I would say that uh, few changes. In consulting, it was always about how great as an individual you are and you are working with great mind, uh, minded people. But when we moved, when I moved to e-commerce, the energy was very different. Right. And this I'm talking about 2013 onwards. At right. that time also, the energy was unlimited energy. Uh, there was no concept of, and which is very great, that with experience you are bringing awesomeness. Right. You know, it's the right energy, the speed of execution, and the sense of ownership that you bring. Uh, anybody and everybody can rise very fast. So that was a very, very big change. But over the last 10 years uh, in e commerce, that has been a constant. Uh, the second thing was uh, the technology oriented solutions, of course, in consulting were less. Uh, but in e commerce, it's very fast paced. Mm. So 
it's more tech oriented and you need to update yourself and update your teams at a very fast pace so, so these are the two main changes all the all the new brands that are coming in all the brands that got established during that time uh, say 13 14 were very tech savvy as uh, far as i uh, as far as i know uh, because i started my career in 2014 as well right i mean much uh, later than you but uh, i've seen a lot of brands using tech side of the things a lot more than i've seen uh, say brands doing it in uh, 2008 through tv or uh, when i you know got the access on internet in the uh, early 2000s right. or things like uh, or at that time so i think i agree with you that a lot of brands started becoming more savvy uh, you know a lot of new people were joining it a lot of new people were starting their own businesses and uh, tech was a solution that was providing them you know with solutions that they were not expecting uh, in the initial phase so i think i agree with you on that part right. uh, having said that sorry i forgot my question yeah having said that you were a part of make my trip during one of the biggest pandemic of our generation how did you keep yourself motivated then because travel industry if i am not mistaken was not doing very well but then you were part of uh, this business how did you keep yourself motivated yeah, that's interesting and that was a very very tricky time uh, i think couple of things which i have learned Uh, one when I was with PwC at that time I was primarily working with Aditya Birla Group as a client, mm-hmm. and they had a clear motto: the last man standing is the first man forward. Wow! Which means practically that if you're going down the you know rabbit hole, and you have your fundamentals right, you will come out very strong. Same is the case which we saw in 2020. I'll tell you a very interesting thing. Uh, I think it was 21st March or 22nd March 2020. The lockdown was called. Hmm. Okay, we were in travel. and uh, just you know march is a time before summer when the peak uh, international bookings uh, all all happen there were more than few lakh international flights booked to our platform there were more than 10 million hotel bookings domestic and international which were through the platform and suddenly one day uh, our organization got to know that the call centers will also not work mm-hmm. and nothing will work so imagine the chaos what company went through uh we do not know we can't cancel calls if somebody is cancelling the flight we cannot tell them when the refund will come mm. how the refund will come or if the refund will come we cannot answer anything and the brands survived because the customers loved them you know customers at core it was the most chaotic time with one day at a time to be taken we don't know you know what will happen a week uh, later mm. but what we need to do today and what we need to do tomorrow was the thing i think the fundamental thing uh, which really helped us at that time was the leadership see like you mentioned in 2013 14 every organization moved to uh, immensely focusing on tech and you know tech first organization the organizations which really thrived were the ones which had beyond tech great business minds who knew how and where to invest how to get profitability and how to invest in people hmm. so with you know at make my trip the great thing was our founders uh, you know our uh, founder and co-founder they were extremely extremely mature in this area one uh, they did a town hall with everybody and said we'll come out of it stronger and every time they drilled down this message throughout the workforce that was one second uh, our ceo came as a you know came with ca background very very phenomenal uh, gentleman uh, for these kind of times the company's balance sheet was very well prepared so we had a clear road map uh, you know uh, runway for 3 years so we knew that we are going to be safe hmm. you know because it was complete uncertain time third the company started investing in things which will lead to growth in much faster way when we come out of the pandemic hmm. and we didn't know when will we come out of the pandemic at that time it was clear 2023 would be the time that travel will bounce back to the 2019 time hmm. so things like uh, investing in ad tech platform things like providing much better solutions for the clients for example uh, we used to book flight we used to get a air ticket and uh, we used to either take a print out of the air ticket show to the security guards mm-hmm. you know csf folks at the airport 
within two months the solution completely changed uh, people started adapting to app within app uh, you could have e print of your uh, luggage tags mm. you could know what gate you need to walk to what aisle you need to walk through and people behavior in terms of how they react at the airport that changed uh, there were solutions which were being developed around how people will travel and book uh, you know visit museums visit galleries once the pandemic is over mm-hmm. it will be all through qr and pre booking will be done so lot of solutions uh, you know investing of time and energy and technology into solutions which will help us bring out much better post covid that happened these three things really helped us in a much big way and again the organization is doing phenomenally well it's one of the very few uh, organizations which is a bit of positive and growing very strong so yeah that really helped at that time i think uh, when you were working with made my trip you really loved working in travel and uh, considering your experience uh, as a consultant where you said you were traveling a lot already uh, when you were leaving make my trip and uh, then you were going to 1mg where you are working right now mm, did you think that uh, you will see some challenges in the healthcare industry that something that you didn't see in travel all that much right see when i was uh, looking for opportunities for a little broader role uh, there were a couple of things which i was very particular what sector to join okay that sector i should be able to relate and it should not be just for the sake of growth uh, nothing against but for example i do not relate myself to gaming i do not relate myself to certain uh, social media platforms so that was not the typical place that i thought ki i'll be able to connect with the customers and the customer obsession is very important so when i was very particular that either education or healthcare sector the second thing which i realized which i had already realized being 8 years in the e-commerce is the people factor has to be fantastic you know it's very easy to get excited with great opportunities uh, maybe good money or the good prospect of fast growth but working with the right people from whom you can learn or with whom you are spending most part of your day that was very important the people factor at 1mg was fantastic even my you know the you know the founders from leaders from the previous organization they also mentioned the same thing so that really helped me and uh, over the last 2 years uh, those two reasons have really uh, proven that I, you know i did a right decision the correct decision thodi der ke liye aapko blank screen dikhega yahan pe but uh, you don't need to worry about it hamare sirf camera mein thoda sa technical issue tha par we have sorted it out we have sorted it out right so yeah. <laughs> swarup aapne uh, itne saal 18 saal aapne kaam kiya is there any advice that you think that this is the best advice i've ever received something uh, that you still go by agar aisa kuch hai to oh, that's interesting uh, i think couple of things uh, one when i was in my graduation college sorry agar uske sath story bhi hai to we'd love to know that <laughs> <laughs> not exact okay yeah for one there is a background story i'll i'll love to share that so one is when i was in my graduation college and uh, i was Uh, I always used to believe the treasures are at bottom of pyramid, which means that those whose CGPA is less, they are very awesome. Hote so I stuck to that belief, and my CGPA wasn't great. But I used to love to read a lot of stuff, especially which was not in my stream of engineering. So there was a very interesting quote, uh, you know, on the footsteps of my library, which I always remember. It's more I don't clearly remember. It's a very common saying that, uh, you know. Uh, normal minds talk about people uh, you know aam aadmi log baaki logon ke bare mein baat karta hai uh, jo thode better brains hote hain they talk about events and the great minds always talk about ideas ideas so that i really liked i still was a common man and i always used to love gossiping with my friends but that quote has stuck to my mind forever and uh, that helps when i am having discussions uh, wherever i mean that's one second uh, you know four five years back a uh, very strong thought came to my mind that anybody and everybody who's getting into the business world which we now call startup i say call it you know it, it's business you know business getting started <laughs> up used to happen 30 40 years ago also i was kind of worrying that what will happen you know once i'm 20 years into the world of business and all those things i try to listen and uh, you know talk to few people then i uh, came across again on one podcast very very interesting piece that uh, 
why is it that the people are starting up young mm. and not starting up at the age of 40 or 45 or 50 right so uh, there was this gentleman who statistically said that uh, look people who get their uh, you know the la- you know big awards and by big awards like nobel is like super massive but even the other scientific community may whatever awards are there they generally get awards for seminal research they would have done in the in their 20s or maybe early 30s hmm same thing was in the case of startup world that the great energy the great mind and the great hustle is with the folks who are in their 20s and maybe early 30s rebellious sort of sa nature hota hai big time the ability to take risk the ability to dekh karke dekhte hain mm-hmm. that awesome energy which is phenomenal right now uh, you know in the grads who are coming out of the campuses but then he mentioned another stat that while people are getting scientific recognition for the seminal work that they have done in their 20s and 30s uh, the number of papers that are written by scientists when they are in their 20s and 30s and what percentage of them get recognized versus the new research done in the in their you know when they are 40s the scientists and the recognition percentage it's far higher hmm. so just breaking it down that if there are 100 you know uh, research papers coming out maybe 3 or 4 are breaking the ceiling but if there are 20 being written by scientists who are above the 40 maybe 5 or 7 are hitting the ceiling hmm. so what was actually happening the risk taking ability was very high even in the scientific community uh, in their 20s and 30s but if the risk taking ability is there in 40s and 50s also the probability to succeed will be very high hmm. and that's the same thing here so again in the in indian startup ecosystem if you see there are a lot of now after 10 12 years of this wave you see there are a lot of folks who are second time or third time successful uh, you know entrepreneurs and you hear them they talk about how they learned and learned over the next you know 8 10 years then they had some success story and then they had the second success story mm. a lot of folks are now reinventing themselves in the in their 40s mm. so that's another learning that it's never too late to reinvent while you mentioned a couple of times that i've been working for so long i don't think so it's so long <laughs> it's our generation that gets tired quite quickly but i think it's always good time to restart if the risk appetite is there so yeah these two things uh, are kind of close to my heart so do you think you're a risk taker I think I'm gradually becoming an increased risk taker. I was not a risk taker. Uh that's why I mentioned that I went into finance right from the campus and then I was in consulting. I was with the big names like PwC just because it was giving a fuzzy feeling of you know that I'm in a comfort zone mm. which in hindsight I think it was wrong. That was the absolute time that I should have had more hustle. But I think over the last uh, few years the ability to take risk has increased lot more to happen and you know once I'm ready there can be a different chapter in career. So if I ask you uh what is that one situation where you think you think you've taken the biggest risk which one would it be Okay I still think when I moved from you know when I was in banking and I got offer from a very very you know at that time the largest uh international bank in a phenomenal good role I happened to follow my heart which was I need to travel and the bad way to travel at that time and earn was to get into technology i switched from the most lucrative career so i was into credit analysis for large syndicated loans which was a very interesting field i know it sounds boring but it was very interesting field <laughs> no it's not i shifted to technology just because i knew uh, that i'll get to travel a lot so it was a big big risk uh, in terms of choosing wrong from career perspective but i think it was good because uh, the amount of travel i did in my uh initially as of life it was really important for me to feel good and i think it's good as well because now uh you've followed your heart taken all those decisions or yeah. you know, all the, those risks has led you to come to this podcast thanks that's a couple of <laughs> so my life has been worth it <laughs> <laughs> that's so in from kapil sharma but i think kapil would understand yeah yeah i'm a big fan oh uh i'm not Yeah, ninety nine percent of Indians are not. I am in the one percent. Kapil Sharma ka koi joke aa jata mere dimag mein to main but bol deta par. ठीक है. The do you know Kapil Sharma has got into YouTube blogging as well? YouTube as well? No, no, I, I would be surprised. Uh, I did see his uh, episode. <clears throat> I think two weeks ago. A uh, full fledged blog. गाड़ी चलाते हुए आज मैं आपको सेट दिखाता हूँ. पूरा फिल्म सिटी घुमाया अपनी गाड़ी में. तो वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग 
I'm very surprised. But yeah, you need to connect with your audience, and the audience way of consumption of content has completely, completely changed. It's yeah. changing every third, fourth year. Right. I I don't think a lot of people are now watching Kapil Sharma show uh, on TV, but a lot of people have transitioned to watch it on YouTube. You get to YouTube where we are at the episode. Interesting. So. अभी YouTube पे भी मिलियंस ऑफ व्यूज आ जाते हैं जस्ट लास्ट नाइट आई वॉज वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो वेर सम पर्सन वॉज रिकॉर्डिंग द स्क्रीन्स ऑन द फ्लाइट राइट आउट ऑफ टेन स्क्रीन्स ऑन दो सीट्स सिक्स ऑफ दो पीपल वर वॉचिंग द कपिल शर्मा शो ऑन फ्लाइट सी लॉयल्टी सर्वाइव कॉन्टेंट मीडियम कॉन्टेंट कंजम्पन मीडियम चेंजेस <laughs> loyalty survives do, do you think you uh, you consume content ya social media pe kuch something that you follow mm-hmm. you might want to share with us uh see i consume a lot of content mm-hmm. uh, mainly i listen a lot of podcasts uh, podcasts are generally around uh, you know the business stories history and i'm a big big history buff it sounded boring but it's the most interesting it thing i believe uh, I, the teachers I have taught history, history all wrong well. you were history student as well amazing i love reading history so i read history a lot and most of my travels are around historic places oh luckily my wife has been accommodative enough she doesn't get <laughs> bored so history is one uh, lately a bit into spirituality also it has helped you know uh, professionally also and then the you know, sundry topics so i love to explore the podcast medium a lot Uh, I love to read a lot, uh, though the time available is a bit less. So I cut down on the OTT time, but <laughs> reading continues. Uh, beyond that, uh, amongst all social medias, if LinkedIn can be called social media, yes, I it try is, to. It is a social media. It's now. social media. I try to avoid other social medias, mainly because of paucity of time. So uh, now that you have said that you consume a lot of content, we have this interesting segment where we. Ask you to guess which ad it is because uh, you being from a business uh, business side of uh, things, we being from an integrated marketing agency, I think we personally uh, relate a lot to ads, especially mm-hmm. the creative ones, uh, ads that have jingles in it, like Cadbury ki ad hoti thi, ya fir yeah, Raymond ki ad hoti thi. तो ऐसे ही एक एड हम प्ले करेंगे आपके लिए और आपको गेस करना है कि वो किस ब्रांड का है कैन यू कैन यू डू दैट आई वुड ट्राई जस्ट टू मेंशन आई हैव बीन अ क्विजर एविड क्विजर फॉर एट नाइन इयर्स एंड देयर वाज अ पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम दैट डैरिको ब्राइन एंड स्टार बासू न्यू आर टीम बाय नेम्स सो बट इट वाज इन इट वाज लाइक 17 18 इयर्स अगो आई कैन गिव इट ट्राई ओके सो वील प्ले द ऑडियो नाउ Quite some time back. Uh, is it the the Vodafone jingle when the Zuzu oh, came and exactly and Vodafone ka Zuzu wala. Usme jitte sare alag alag characters hote the. Yeah. Vodafone. Yeah, that Do was amazing. That amazing campaign. Kitna uh, that one and the Pug Mark one, one, the Pug one, both were amazing. Uh-huh. Right, right. So uh, that ends our podcast. Thank you, Saurabh. for uh, coming on to this show i really enjoyed it and uh, i think after this podcast i'll be speaking to you about history because you have a lot of interest in it i have interested uh, interest in talking about history i don't find a lot of people who have interest in history so <laughs> you are the first one uh, this is the end of the podcast thank you all for coming on to this show we'll see you in the next one Bye.